I've realized how impactful filling my free time with actual money making activities can be. People come to me all the time and they're like, oh, I'm trying to do this or do this or X, Y, Z. I'm working on this strategy or, or like spending time doing personal development or other shit that you didn't have time for. Yeah. So I think that's a big thing people have to focus on is like, hey, there's stop making excuses for shit. Use all those things as excuses of why you need to do the dirty work and do what you need to do to where you can get consistent, to where you can start spending more time on the shit you really want to spend your time on. Welcome back to another episode of Light It Up Podcast. If you're new to this channel and you want to know everything about making money in real estate, selling, sales skills, building your business, or investing, then subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know what makes our great guests so successful. Let's talk about adding leverage. So we've been getting a lot of calls of people asking us how we've hired virtual assistants to scale and leverage our business. So we've opened up our playbook to all of you. If you're looking to add leverage in your business, whether it's administrative support, ISA outbound callers, go to adleverage.com and they'll be there to help you staffing your team. All right, it's our privilege to introduce Mr. Jay Bond, a distinguished team leader at Bond Real Estate Group, brokered by eXp Realty, a fellow fast forward movement uh, patron, let's call it. Jay's got his 17 year journey as a licensed agent. He brings a wealth of experience, previously an independent broker. I know you brought your whole team over to eXp. Uh, based in St. Yeah. Louis, Obispo County, California, known for his aggressive prospecting, which we're going to talk about today. Jay has an outstanding track record, having closed over $100 million in expired listings. Welcome to the show, Jay. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, bro. Thanks, fellas. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So... I'm excited to have you <laughs> here, man, because you and I have connected a few times at some recent uh, EXP events, yes. and I've been telling Kiro a lot about you because of our subscriber base being so heavily focused on prospecting and outbound mm -hmm. you know, outbound sales, we thought you'd be a great fit, man. So thank you so much for spending some time with us. Of course, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But uh, yeah, but, brother, happy but, to be here. But before we jump into that, we're gonna hit you with the lightning round questions so we could get to know you a little <clears> bit better. Already. We didn't prep you for any of these, but I don't think you need any preparation. I was really hoping it would be Bond, J Bond. That's... But you want it to go off for two minutes, but it's fine. All right, let's go. Audio jungle. All right, I'm going to hit you with the first one. Uh, Jay, what's one accomplishment you are most proud of? Let's see here. Retire my mother. Nice. That's probably a big When did you do that? For me. Uh, five years ago. That's awesome, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know when we had dinner in Montana, you were telling us some old uh, war stories about growing up. Whew. <laughs> growing up, one I remember most is uh, growing up next to the liquor store and seeing all the fights and all the crazy shit. But oh, bro, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So grow, growing up, we lived in like a, a shanty house right next door to a liquor store and a dive bar. Yeah, like literally I could play like handball on it in my front yard. Like that's yeah. like where it was. And so between five, six o'clock, most nights, there'd be some breakout brawl between two guys that would literally fall out of the bar steps and into my front yard. So that was always an entertaining and always entertaining thing. Or the liquor store would get robbed, which my mother worked as a clerk there oh, as damn. well. So have you ever watched And then the it's weird like you get robbed and you're right next to your house. Like <laughs> that's got, literally the got nowhere, to, nowhere to run. Yeah. But that's <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> right. So always exciting. Never, never a dull moment. If you could go back in time, what's one thing you would tell your teenage self? Tell my teenage self, uh, be patient. And everyone you know now, you will give zero. Can I cuss on here? Yeah. Can I swear on here? Oh, let it You'll rip. Zero shits about in 20 years, 10 years. It's true. Yeah. Well, from a 20. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. What chance encounter changed your life forever? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, you know, we talked about this earlier as far as like coaching is concerned, right? And so I would say go into like my first like major, like like main main circuit, like real estate conference event. It was probably, you know, my, my biggest breakthrough. You know, I think for, especially like gaining traction my first couple of years, like in the business, you know, I was doing handful, you know, maybe less than a year of coaching and kind of like from the outside peeking in, 
right? And just being like, okay, well, I'm not going to completely come out of my comfort zone and like network and like, you know, get involved in this. And I decided to do it. You know, I was trying myself, I can't afford it. I'm building a business. Why am I going to fly here, do this and that? And then you go. And that was like my biggest aha moment at like a large real estate conference of being like, wow. I was like, okay, well, I see how many things are possible. I see so many people crushing it. A lot of self-made people crushing it. People doing stuff at certain levels. I'm like, why the fuck can I do that myself? Right. And I think like that was a big eye opener because like you look at like how big your world is, right? When you start out with just about anything, because what what like grows your mindset, what grows like opportunities, it's just being exposed to different ideas and thoughts, yeah. right? And so it's just amazing how like that trajectory grows and like what opportunities it pre presents itself and uh, what it opens your mind up to. But it also makes you feel just a lot more confident and better about what you're doing, yeah. right? And um, and knowing that some average motherfuckers that just put in the effort can can go out and crush it. Yeah. Not to say everyone's an average, but, you know, people that, you know, you're like, wow, they're like me. Because I, I don't wake up each morning and be like, wow, I'm fucking Superman. You know, you wake up, you're like, oh, I mean, I'm an average dude. I'm doing this now. Like, why are these people crushing it? I can't get out there and crush it. It's like, hey, normal fucking people can get out there and crush it too if they put the energy, they put disproportionate amount of energy in one direction. Yeah. You know, people don't quite realize that. It's like, hey, you know, I want to have everything. I'm like, well, fuck, everybody wants to have everything, right? Everybody does. But it's like, what do you do? You do this. You do this. Like, oh, I want to be a great dad. I want to be present for this. I'm like, well, you pick one fucking thing. You run in that direction. You know, especially with business, it's like, hey, I'm going to put such a disproportionate amount of energy in one direction for so long that it's going to create enough opportunity and consistency that, hey, maybe now I can build out and build infrastructure and then start going to my kids' fucking baseball games. Not that I have kids, but if I did, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or doing this or like spending time doing personal development or other shit that you didn't have time for. Yeah. So I think that's a big thing people to focus on is like, hey, there's, stop making excuses for shit. Use all those things as excuses of why you need to do the dirty work and do what you need to do to where you can get consistent, to where you can start spending more time on the shit you really want to spend your time on. Yeah, so true. My mom used to always tell me, she's like, you're either going to suffer in the beginning and relax in the end, or you'll relax right now, and then you'll suffer in the end. Yeah. It's choice is yours. So that makes total sense. You invest all that time, you sacrifice <laughs> the partying, the hanging out with friends to get your craft down so well. That way you're able to create value so that way you're solving problems and putting value in the marketplace and getting paid in correlation to that 100%. value. So 100%. by the while we're on the topic of your mother, is your mother Nisrala831 on Instagram? No, nah, it's my dad, man. This is the cutest thing I've ever seen. The other night I'm watching this. Jay, can you see this? Read it. I can see it. Oh, blank avatar. How many followers? Zero zero one. <laughs> one follower. Following one. Who are they following? Yeah. Kiro. That's, oh my god! That's his dad. He I liked love it. he liked all of our posts, and I was like, "Who is this? It's got to be one of his relatives, obviously, with the last name." I'm not no joke. He's the best yeah. critique ever. He'll watch every video and then he'll text me. He'll be like, "You know the 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 Jen Gottlieb one? She no, was very do it wise. in his accent. Do it in his accent." He's watching this bubble for you, baby. He's like he's like you know the Jen Gottlieb girl. She's very smart. She's very smart about the lifestyle and the fear. Come to, you know come to coming over as a fear is very good. And you have that's very smart. And then <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, thanks, Dad. I appreciate. I just that. couldn't tell if it was your dad or your mother, but that was awesome. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, listen, it. I got, I got one more question for you here. What book has made the biggest impact on your life? Oh, um, biggest book. I, I want to say two. I want to say two books. I, I would say, um, you know, one, Rich Dad Poor Dad made an impact on perspective for me on just um, what's an asset, what's a liability. Right. And I think that we're kind of bred and groomed and conditioned to be consumer bitches. Right. And like, that's all we are taught to do is like get in debt, you know, go to school for shit that is not applicable to the real world, accrue six figures in debt, you know, earn a salary that's, that's not manageable or realistic or livable anymore. Right. And then buy a bunch of shit we don't need and leverage it with credit. Yep. You know, and like that's, that was such an eye opener on, you know, buying a personal residence versus investments, you know, et cetera. So especially as an entrepreneur. Um, and the other one, honestly, was fucking Grant Cardone's TEDx, dude. I remember reading that uh, when it first came out and my business was first trying to gain traction. And it was such an echo for like what I was thinking in my mind of, you know, especially for new agents or new people in the industry. It's like, hey, however much effort and attention that you feel you need in one direction to like build out your business times that by 10. Because yeah. that's the reality of how much effort and consistency and sacrifice accountability and commitment you need right to start gaining traction i've never read a book and like got excited and like made verbal like chuckling sounds out loud right like i'm like i'm oh, reading a book fucking laughing like what the fuck's wrong with this guy same <laughs> thing man i remember i i don't think i read 
10x, but I listened to it and I remember distinctly, I used to like make a habit of listening to it in between like listing appointments or when I was driving, yeah. like to meet a client, I would just like say, I would play this game with myself, like on a work day, if it's between eight and six and I'm in my car, like no radio, no music, it had to be a work, a, a book, an audio, audio uh, book. And I remember distinctly listening to 10X and just being like growling at traffic lights and just being like, I got to get there. I got to get there faster. I got to do more. <laughs> like I'm behind. I like just the insane, like craziness that would come with 10X. <laughs> like when you hear, when you just hear that title, you don't think of like Grant Cardone just growling. I, I've never read the book. I feel like I read the uh, Be Obsessed, or, be, or Sell or Be Sold. Be Obsessed or Be Average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, the, the, those two I've. I've, I've Boba, baby. Oh, it's God. a different it's a different book simple message simple message but uh but yeah it, it resonated with me and um i think it's important for for people to really to really focus on because we all we all know we're all around hyper successful people people that have used real estate as a real as a catalyst for delving into a bunch of other very successful ventures right and yeah. and we all know people who become hyper successful like i see people all the time and it's so funny when they haven't had that like mindset shift and you're still in scarcity mindset and they're like this person's making so much money. I don't know why they're just not on the beach all day. Mm. I'm like, well, because everyone knows here who's been successful that you have to work your ass off to get anything worth having. And then once you have something worth having, you have to work twice as fucking hard to keep it. Yep. Right. And people don't realize that. And that's, and that's the reality. And it's appreciation. I think it's treating, you know, uh, expectations for appreciation yeah. on the process. We're going to stop. You, you go. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to force myself to stop. No, finish that thought. I say, well, you see people like hyper, like Richard Branson, Virgin Records, fucking multi-billionaire. You know, he could be on his island kicking back, having celebrities drop in and announce this and that. But he's not. He's still pushing forward. Elon Musk still pushing forward. People yeah. still trying to, you know, break barriers. And that's that's the degree of separation. Yeah, I love right. It. When I was asking John, you know, who is like, tell me a little bit more about J Bond, and he was like, he's the kind of guy that when we went to uh, the, the the retreat, we were like, all right. You know, Colton's like, I'm gonna go to the gym, and you're like, all right, I'm gonna go hit expireds. So, yeah. there has to be some kind of drive or some kind of like laser focus on there. What drives you to want to do that, where you're sacrificing a lot of things to just say, okay, I'm gonna go hunt right now? You know, it's it's that's a that's a great question, dude. Um, I've realized how impactful filling my free time with actual money making activities can be. Right. And I, I have that discussion with my agents all the time. I have, you know, people coming to me all the time and they're like, oh, I'm trying to do this or do this or X, Y, Z. I'm working on this strategy or that. I'm like, maximize your prospecting hours. Like, I can't tell you, like, if you want to have a high return, like on investment, prospect as, as much as you can. You know, in my marketplace, you know, we're in a transient marketplace at my level of business now, I would say 50, 60% of my annual business should be coming from past clients. It's not primarily because I'm usually very seller heavy, have been for a decade plus. And when they sell, it's because they passed away or they're moving to live next to their adult children who live out of area or they left California because they can't afford to live here anymore. And so we don't get as much repeat. So we're constantly having to fill that that pipeline filled with, with leads, which has really trained me to just not stop. And so for almost 12 years now, I've every single day, Monday through Saturday, I cold call for two hours. And then when I'm not working with my team or doing speaking engagements or doing other stuff, I'm, I'm doing about three to four hours of like deep, deep follow-up and lead nurture. So ultimately almost as if like a glorified ISA, if you will, for what I do. Um, and it's just, it's afforded me the lifestyle that I have, you know? And the thing that people have to realize, like I, like I mentioned earlier, like people think that to deserve shit. I don't fucking deserve anything. You know, I don't deserve anything. None of us deserve anything, but I can work my ass off for fucking 90 days and carve out a week or two for myself because I feel like I give myself enough cushion and breathing room to take two weeks for myself. You know what I mean? Just like when I'm at a conference, like they're not cheap to be there. Dollars aren't going to fucking wait around for me. You know, when I'm at the airport, I know I'm going somewhere badass. Like I total it up. Like I probably take two months plus off each year traveling. And um, when I'm at the airport, am I sitting around having a cocktail, getting fucked up because I know I'm going on vacation? No, I don't. I sit there for two hours. And I take advantage of my time and I make some calls. Why? That way when I'm gone for the next 10, 12 days, wherever I'm at, I can enjoy being bougie and doing whatever the shit I want to do yeah. because I, I feel good about it, right? And and I think that's a big degree of separation is people just don't, they think they're owed shit, yeah. you know? Like I have like I have people approach me all the time. They're like, hey, you know, I'm getting my license. I want to come see you. I'm working this job. I'm fucking working my ass off. I'm ready to kick back. I'm like, you think what I do is kick back, motherfucker? <laughs> I was like, you can watch me for a fucking date. If you don't have a heart attack, just fucking watching me. I was like, 
You know what I mean? Exactly. Like they just, people have to stop. And when, when you trade, like I, I'm appreciative and I'm grateful for the fact that, that I can be industrious like that. Yeah. Right. And not other countries have that. And a lot of people have that availability and opportunity, but a lot of people do, and they just don't, they just don't maximize it. Yeah. Right. And they're so afraid to take that leap of, of consistency. Um, and it's not rocket science, what we do, it's just accountability. Right. right. And it's discipline to, to get out there and do it. And I like the lifestyle that I, I like making the money I make yeah. and helping who I help. I think in like a sick way though. And I think the three of us all mm -hmm. are sort of coded this way where I don't necessarily want it to be easier. Is that weird? What do you mean? Like, I like the hunt. Like, don't get me wrong. There's a certain amount of business I wish just yeah. sort of came into my inbox or fell into my lap each and every year. But I sure. also, I really do like actually like the idea of, of finding something or finding that lead from nothing and paying virtually nothing for it. You know what it's I mean? So like broke. not buying a lead Thrill. and just having, being proud that like, hey, I, I got a list of phone numbers and I figured out who was most likely to sell on this mm -hmm. list. And I asked the right questions to figure yep. out who was the most motivated and who sort of fit into my box, my buy box or my my listing mm -hmm. box. And like I, I I made something from nothing. Don't get me wrong. Again, I wish there were a certain yeah. amount of leads. And I and I know that there is that will certainly just fall into <laughs> to my lap each year. But it's because usually because I created them something from nothing to even find that past client. Right. And now they come back to me 100%. because I did right by them in the past. Yeah. You're looking at me like yeah. I'm crazy. It's thrill. You don't like you like the hunt. I, I, I would just do. I would just change I've the seen definition. You do some crazy shit. Yeah, but no, all I'm saying is that I would just change the definition. It's all of it is great, but the ones that are the most the ones that you, you care about the most or the ones that you're most proud of is the ones that were the hardest for anybody else to get and you got it from everybody else, right? Yeah. So like an expired that everybody else was chasing after, and then the seller is like, I'm gonna go with you because no one ever asked me that question. Oh, that makes sense. It sounds like you actually care. Or yeah. you were able to mirror their personality because of the skill level that no one else had, and you're like, I got this in the bag. Like those, those for me is wow. what goes me, makes me go crazy. And I'm like, yes, I got them. This maniac over yeah. here will chase a $200,000 listing harder than a $2.5 million listing because another agent's competing. Well, that's my competitiveness. Yeah. Sometimes so, I look up and I'm like, why am I still chasing this seller for the last two weeks when I, you know, and I look at the price point, I'm like, this is maybe not the best use of my time, but it's my competitive nature that drives me. So yeah. sometimes You're I just need a little. Individual. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, we all are right, in, in this industry. Walk us through the, the the work ethic that you have, because for us, the one thing that attracted us to each other is that we had a very short list of what we were willing, uh, not willing to sacrifice to get what we wanted, right? It was a very short mm -hmm. list. There was no excuses. We were in the office from like sometimes six o'clock in the morning to like almost midnight. And mm -hmm. there was reasons why we would do that. What, where does your work ethic come from that gives you the energy to want to do, like, become a workforce? Yeah, bro. You know, growing up, I grew up, for lack of a better, you know, definition, white trash. <laughs> and, you know, I did, we, we grew up and like how I grew up was not, you know, not a dream childhood for most people, you know, in America. And, um, you know, I saw a lot of things, exposed to a lot of things. And it really built me up by the time I was in my 20s where I was like, you know what, I don't know exactly what I want in this life, but I've got a whole list of shit I don't want in my life, right? And I want to make sure that, that list doesn't become a reality or, or continue to be a reality in my life. I've slept in cars. I've, I've had nowhere to go. I got my business off the ground, literally moving in with family and sleeping on their floor for two years. Why I faked it to make it right. And just kept getting after it and getting after it, trying to do why did it keep me up at night, spending another day, how I grew up. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I don't care what I have to do. I don't care if I've got to knock on a thousand doors. I don't call, care if I have to cold call a thousand strangers in my underwear fucking all day long. Like, that's what I'm going to do. Right. And, you know, I, I took me a while to have a breakthrough because I had saved up money to make it, try to make a, a big leap full time from what I was in previously into this. And, um, and I, you know, I actually spoke at Tom, Tom Ferry Summit in 2017 about like my experience um, doing that and going through that. And I uh, saved them all my money. And what do you what do you do early on? You know what I mean? Everyone's looking for an easy button. I started buying leads, Zillow, Realtor.com, you know, going broke in less than six months. Because why? Because I think because I spoke to someone three times that they're gonna fucking transact with me. Right. You know, and I'm calling these companies like these fucking leads are shit. These are garbage. 
I'm spending, you know, all my money on this. I call these guys four times. They're not buying or selling. Like this is, this is BS. Not knowing that, Hey, you know what? I probably need a hundred thousand dollar budget before I would even consider buying into Zillow or realtor.com. Right. I need to make sure that I've got maybe a year or two's budget because realistically these people probably won't convert for 18 plus months. So true. You know, I just need to know I need to nurture them. So it's just about having realistic expectations, understanding the barriers of entry and then getting a coach and finally saying, hey, like, stop spending money that you don't have. You don't have a consistent budget. Right. Do everything you can for free. That way, you know, you can sweat equity until you can be in a position where maybe you can have a little bit of check equity. Right. And then go. And that really resonated with me. And so at that point, I had kind of a breakdown after falling in and out of the business about two or three times. And experiencing the same thing is like, well, I'm going to have zero expectation and I'm just going to go out there and put my head down, try to hone my skills, keep all my tools and my toolbox sharp. And I'm just going to maximize my day calling and knocking on every single door that I can to where I would have any excuse I could to go knock a neighborhood. I didn't have any deals there, any open houses there. I was just branching out, just trying to do whatever. And then when you finally do that, it's weird how the sky parts. Right. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you, you get a couple of bumps and you're like, wow, you're like, okay, I can do this. Right. I was listening to, have you guys read um, Matthew McConaughey's new book? Mm, no. Anyways, I think PVD, someone interviewed him recently and, and I was listening to it and it's funny because, you know, we all, we all know Dazed and Confused, right? We all love that fucking movie. And so in that, you know, he said after that movie, he, that was his first like Hollywood opened the door to him, right? He got a little bit of attention after that, everything went stale and he couldn't get a gig for the life of him. There was some big Hollywood manager that was, you know, let him sleep on his couch and shit. And one day he woke up and he's like, tells Matthew McConaughey, hey, dude, he's like, you fucking stink of desperation. Like, go to Europe or do some backpacks and shit. Do something for a year just to fucking wow. get your mind, stop being such a desperate bitch. And so he did. He went fucking riding motorcycles through Europe and all this shit and came back for a year. And he just came out with all appreciation, zero expectation. And that's something I got from Tony Robbins. Zero trade expectation for appreciation. And then all of a sudden it's weird how the universe, you know, opens up if you put enough you know, disproportionate attention in one direction with zero expectation, right? Of just, of just going. And I try to tell that to agents as well, because, you know, you do shit three or four or five times that you hear everybody telling you to do, it doesn't work. And so you're like, well, I'm going to rule it out. It just doesn't work. It's like, how about this? Get rid of all of your expectation, follow protocol, do it this way you're supposed to do it for fucking the next 90 days and come back to me and tell me if you don't have any lead opportunities or any deals going on. I'll be fucking mind blown if you don't. Dissect because that a, just, little, a little bit more for me when you say remove the expectation. Yeah. So would you say that so, that translates you, you to like this. help as many people as you can with, uh, with their I, I situation? Would say at, at, we're in that type of symbiotic relationship, right? With clients and vendors and everything else where, you know, we, we provide a service for people and we help them out, right? With a lot of dollars involved. And of course, you know, our reward is, is commissions, right? Compensation for that. But I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is people doing activities that they think are going to produce a return on investment and trying them a few times and not getting the results that they want um, and just ruling out that it doesn't work or going into something having all expectation hey i'm, I'm going to do this i'm going to get that i want this so bad and it's like like you just stink of the desperation you yeah. stink of wanting it so bad and it's like get get rid of that you know what i mean get rid of it don't have it go in with zero expectation and just say hey you know i'm going to go into this i'm going to give it 110 percent until i drop dead right or i win and without any expectation and just know that i'm going to follow procedure and do this to the t the best way that i can and do it so consistently that i'm going to convince myself that it's working whether i get results or not and when people do that is when finally you have a breakthrough and it's when i had my breakthrough you know i finally stopped my third time falling out of the business, having to go back and work for someone else, try to save money, hired a coach I couldn't afford, and just finally sat down and thought to myself, I'm just like, hey, you need to stop being a bitch, and you need to stop having expectations about shit, you just need to get the fuck out there and do it, yeah. right? And as soon as, I, as soon as I did that, my whole, my whole energy changed. I felt positive. I was taking rejection so much more. Because people don't get that too. It's like, hey, you got to get through 100 no's before you get a yes, Yeah, you know? And it's like, hey, now I was just I was gobbling up those nose with a smile on my face and just racking them up, racking them up. I'm saying increase my frequency, increase my frequency. And then all of a sudden shit starts popping. Then it fucking clicked. I'm like, aha. I was like, wow, I got like three listings at once. It's like a FISBO, like two expired. It's got a buyer in a contract all at once. And I'm like, holy fuck. I'm like, wow. I was like, when I just put my head down and grind, just do the shit and just know I'm going to have to go through these notes. And that's just part of the process.
And I just need to increase them until I start getting a yes. And then shit starts popping. That's in my whole world turnaround. Yeah. yeah. You know, and sometimes people just have to go through that transition, dude. I think it's interesting too. Like you were talking about how you paid for solo leads and none of them, none of them popped as, as you said, maybe because you didn't have enough of a budget or you just didn't try for long enough or whatever it was. And then obviously you were working, you know, you shifted more towards phone prospecting, expires, FISBOs, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. And you were having better luck with that because you, you had less expectation. It's funny mm -hmm. though, when you think about it, like when you compare the two, there's, there's still rejection in buying Zillow leads because half those people you call, 100%. even though you paid for the lead, mm -hmm. we all know you call the people and they're like, I didn't sign up for that or I'm not ready yet. Or yeah. I just hit a button online. I didn't think you were actually going to call me. Like there's still rejection. But when you go out and, and yeah. get the free rejection, right, which is prospecting, mm -hmm. expires, FISBOs, whatever it is, yeah. it's such much, so much worse rejection, right? Those people are screaming and yelling, you know, I don't need a realtor. Yep. Stop calling me. Where did you get my number? All that crazy shit. The level of rejection is so much higher. But once you put yourself mm -hmm. in that, which again is free because it, it feels weird because you're not paying for it, but you have to fight it. Mm -hmm. Once you get through that level, then I think you can have that massive breakthrough like you did. Yeah. To tap into, Huge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just tap into the vein of the appreciation versus expectation. When you connect the dots between the skills you learn and the income you earn, that's when you become obsessed with the craft itself and you become obsessed with the actions and the activities, yeah. not the outcomes of it. And the one thing that helped me, yep. as I was 18 when I first started learning some of these skills, I would use them when we'd go out on girls. And you would you would start seeing it. Like, now you got Jay's interest here. But think about it like this, right? You go out the first time <laughs> and like you open up, you do an opener, right? And then you get rejected. You're like, hmm, that didn't work out as well as I thought. It's not like you're gonna be like, all right, I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna stop talking to a chick completely. You're like, your body's telling you, yeah, you need to go talk to this girl. So you're like, all right, let's go try it again. Mm -hmm. And then you're trying it again. And you're like, this one worked a little bit better. I could do it this way. And then now you're like, all right, this is the perfect opener. I'm gonna start using this way. And then you're like, you get two steps further, two steps further. And now you have mm -hmm. an orchestra of tools that you're using and in so many different situations you are more versatile and you become obsessed with that. And you're like, all right, now let me try it in this way. And that's when you see it in that, that I always, when I'm talking to agents, yeah. I'm always relating it to dating life. I'm like, sales is like dating. Yeah. You know, you just have to think of it wow. in that term and you'll get excited about the process, even if it flourishes mm -hmm. into a check or not, because you're literally just, it's like that book, Rejection Proof, right? where he would go in there and he would mm -hmm. ask ridiculous requests and people would say yep. yes to some of them. And he was just getting used to taking the no's because eventually he'll get a yes, but then he's fine tuning the ask. So 100%, bro. I know you're yeah. still looking for that. Yes. Right. So looking for in that. The, yes. In no. the dating, in the dating world. <laughs> no, it, it, it'll, it's, it'll come through, bud. Thanks baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's the part that's exciting and making it fun. The, the part that I guess gets a lot of people is staying consistent with it or wanting to stay with it when the money starts coming in. Cause you're like, this is so boring. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Walk and us through that. Yeah. yeah. And you know, you're, you're absolutely right, bro. Keeping the tools in your toolbox sharp, because once you do, you get that consistency. It stops being, you know, Hey, you know, about money. I mean, money's great. That's a great byproduct of it, but you start liking the fact that you're winning. And you're like, I love sharpening my tools, sharpening my skill set, my objection handling, my scripting, everything that I'm doing, my prospecting habits, all that stuff you just fine tune, right? You, you, we notice that. It's like when agents start out, what do you tell them to do? Track their conversations, you know, track your appointments. And you start noticing. I remember, you know, 12 years ago when I'm going on a dozen appointments getting like one and I'm like, why is my conversion so shitty, right? And you're like, well, it's great. You're doing great on the phone, but maybe you need to improve the other half of it, which is your presentation right? How you're closing all these things. There's always, it's multifaceted and there's so many different arenas and avenues that you can improve on just to keep all those tools in your toolbox sharp. Hey, it's not only am I an aggressive, consistent prospector, I'm great at following up and nurturing. I'm great at getting the appointment. I'm great at presenting and being efficient and I'm great at closing and getting that contract signed. And then I'm just as good as positioning my clients well and actually getting fucking home sold. You know what I mean? Like all these different parts, all these moving parts, that you hit on and it does, it gets addicting. And you're like, wow, you're like, I love the fact. And now it's like, hey, instead of one conversation to an appointment, it's like three, you know yeah. what I mean? Cause you've got, you've just gotten so much better over the last 10 plus years of honing the skills. And again, and time goes by quick, yeah. you know? And I tell all agents in this business too, it's like, hey, you know, you've got to crawl before you walk, you got to walk before you run. And, you know, this is one of those business, business where experience makes you better. You know, yeah. you get better every deal you do. You learn how to close them better. You learn how to navigate the waters better what you say better, how to say them, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's, that's what 
the huge thing was for me, dude. And then I got addicted to it. Then it's like, you know, now I'm doing NLP training. Now I'm doing, you know, everything that you can um, just to get better. Right. Yeah. And I love the analogy of the dating because it's true. It's like, hey, you got a prospect <laughs> and you got to be good at following up. Yeah. <laughs> so. and it, it, I think when you start, you know, like we like we said, the reason you track your numbers, I don't know how you guys do it over at the Tom Ferry organization. Mm -hmm. And I make that joke because, <laughs> like, as you know, as we talked about before, we grew up, and I grew up in Mike Ferry organization. We would use yep. what's called yep. the numbers or, uh, analyzer. So we would put in, all right, today I called for five hours and I booked, uh, you know, three appointments. And of those three appointments that I went on, I got one listing, right? And you start mm -hmm. trying to constantly, you know, refine your numbers, right? So you could see what's interesting about it is if you could see that you set 10 appointments, but you only went on a couple of them then maybe um, you weren't qualifying well enough because maybe you shouldn't be going on. Uh, you know, maybe those people weren't worthy of the actual appointment. Mm -hmm. And it, and you can see where the issues are in your business. And that's why we all track our numbers. Yep. So 100% we're a bottlenecks and where you need to improve. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. the, I agree. I agree. But parallel, similar, similar. Yeah. Walk us through the complacency part. So what we went through just recently is two years of uh, I would say feast, right? And then all of a sudden rates increase. Now it's a lot of famine. There's a drop in inventory, a drop in transactions. And you're saying earlier, before we got on, right now people aren't working or putting it in. So I'm doing it more. So walk us through the transition and what needs to be done in this market to actually be successful. People need to block out their time, right? And and I and I, I don't want to lean so heavily on on time management. You know, I kind of laugh at that concept of time management because it really what it boils down to is just self-management and it's like hey like can you adhere and commit to two hours of prospecting a day can you adhere and commit to two hours of follow-up per day you know like really you know disciplined no distraction minimal distraction type of environment to, to get it done and and most people just can't you know, or they don't, they don't want to, or they don't, they don't want it bad enough. They'd rather blame interest rates. They'd rather blame the market. You know, not all teams and agents are down this year. Some are, you know, some are a little bit slower, this and that. I, I love it. I love the grittiness of this market right now. One, for a few reasons, we're very established and we're going to see a big, you know, mass exodus of agents who've been in the business less than five years that are going to go back to being fucking baristas in the next six to nine months. You know what I mean? I'm sorry for them. They have the same opportunities we all do. The big difference is I'm not complaining about interest rates. I'm picking up the phone every day and I'm getting after it yeah. and just going back to basics like we've always done. And, um, and I love it now because it's just, it's a critical time. It's a time of people who are going to make it over the next 12 to 24 months and continue trekking along and the people who are not, yeah. you know, and, and I can't, I can't emphasize that people have to just really want it bad enough think about your why is your motivators of, of doing what you're doing and fishing where the fish are and, and you don't have to spend money to do that right, right now and that's what i that's what i love i mean we're so we're, we've always been very hyper profitable because we don't pay a lot of referral fees i mean agent to agent's always been a big part of our business but as far as us you know paying out zillow or other companies we don't we're super profitable per deal yeah. And um, that's because it is. It's all self-generated. It's all self-nurtured. And um, he's gonna go piss, or he's gonna piss his. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm tired of this bullshit. No, no, yeah. imagine. No, did he, you're you're so you're so right on that. The it's interesting because I was asking my coach uh, Steve Powers. I was like, all right, should I be adding agents to my team now? Because should my attention be divided in terms of training people or, or getting people on there? And mm -hmm. one, of the that, one thing that he told me that I thought was, it's so powerful and now I'm realizing that it's so true. He was like, if they will come in this marketplace and they will do the work and they'll succeed in a normal marketplace, yeah. they'll dominate. And I have one guy that started mm -hmm. with me in May. He's part-time, but he makes more contacts than anybody else. And he's had more deals fall mm -hmm. apart due to certain conditions with lenders, with this and the other going mm -hmm. through the whole thing. And then deals that he has closed out but I could see how he would be an absolute beast in a normal market conditions that's there. Mm -hmm. How yeah. are you grooming yep. your guys in this market? You know, it's just having those direct and tough, tough conversations. You know, yeah. the last three years, I think we've all been, especially team agents, have gotten comfortable with a lot of inbound lead flow. You know, whether you are on Zillow or whether you've got Realtor.com leads or, or HomeLight or OpCity, whatever, whatever it is that's coming in. 
And so they're used to getting the ball handed to them and then running with it, right? And when a lot of people aren't out in the marketplace because of affordability or whatever else, clearly those referrals are not coming in yeah. as much. And so people are left sitting there thinking, well, gosh, you know, what, what do I do? What do I need to do? And it's, it's just that. It's like, hey, you know, get back to basics and have the conversations. You know, what I love about my, my business it to, to a certain degree, if you will, it's not hugely scalable, but it, it is something and it's for profitable, but just going into our database and showing them, you know, hey, I'm in the trenches every day asking you to do the same things that I'm doing every day. You know, there's not an agent on my team that can sit here and say, well, Jay tells us to do X, Y, Z, but he doesn't do it. It's like, no, no, I do it a hundred times X more than most agents nationally. I was like, so, you know, when they see me in Fall Boss and they see call attempts made, they see conversations, this and that. I'm like, you see how many times you see my face show up here when we're looking at our call logs? I'm like, what do I tell you about frequency? Yeah. You know, I want to see your faces here more because I tell you what, the more I see your faces populate in here, the more you're going to have dollars coming in. And the more that you're going to be surviving because we're all going to have deals falling apart, you know, especially right now that happens, you know, and I remember one of the first lessons I learned, you know, when I was starting out with doing any business coaching was I was upset about a deal falling through, yeah. you know, and the coach was like, well, what's, what's the lesson you need to learn from that? And I'm thinking about it and they're like, had more than one fucking deal going on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's the truth. You bummed about your escrow falling apart. Well, fuck, you should add three or four more. Yeah. If you don't, well, then you need to get out there and get it. Like, you know, we're going to go through tough market conditions, you know, and, and that guy, I love the fact that he's, he's putting in the effort. He's going to, just like you said, in a more normalized marketplace, crush it. Uh, but this is the testing grounds for just showing grit. It's like, Hey, if you can fucking make it right now, you can make it in any market condition. Yeah. And just think about when it is more normalized, how you're going to just dominate and crush it. Right. Cause you are. Yeah. You know, you're doing what you need to do. You're doing what you need to do. You're doing more than the average agent so you can get by. And then when the market normalizes, believe me, you're going to fucking be rewarded for it. Yeah, so true. Yeah. Having done 100 million in expired listings uh, yeah. in volume, what's one listing that you took that's a story that rings in your mind or one of the most iconic expired listings that you've taken? The, oh, what, the story of getting it, if you could share that. <sighs> Dude, I've had so many just wild experiences with properties from tenants, people, not even tenants, sellers. I've had a, at one time I had a seller squat refused to move out for like maybe five days after post close of escrow. And I had to go show up and break up a fist fight between him and the buyer one time. That was uh, <laughs> interesting. So, so you sold the property and the seller wouldn't leave? Why well, he was not making progress with going. And I was like, hey, I'm Gonna, you know, how about this? As a courtesy, I'm gonna pay for your movers just because you're not doing it and you're not making traction. And then he fucking fired him that day. And like, I'm like, why are we? Why did you fire him? Oh, this, this or that. I'm like, ah, I was like, this, this isn't gonna be good. Come closing time, you know, about an hour later, you got these buyers showing up with their moving truck trying to get in. And I did everything I could to get the sellers out. And they were like, we're not leaving, and we're gonna take our sweet house time. And, and uh, so I had to break up a fist fight. Oh and so God. that was interesting. Um, what else? I feel like I've got so many others. Um, had a gentleman tenant squatting in a house we were trying to sell and he was insane and ended up, uh, we he ended up having the locks changed on him by the seller. Hmm. He ended up breaking in the window, cutting himself severely oh and God. bled all over the entire property to where it looked like a murder scene. And uh, we dealt with that. That was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I think of like sunny See, California I, and you guys only sell like, yeah. uh, you know, homes with like uh, the infinity pools that, you know, just have fabulous views. And, mm. and I thought that like, uh, you know, us being in New Jersey, we're the only ones that deal with crazy tenants. But no, no, bro, we, we're, we're dealing we're dealing with it all. You know, my market's interesting. I've got beach, I got wine country. We've got a lot of ag and everything in between. Yeah. We could go to selling a mobile home to $5 million oceanfront to some vineyard estate to this and that. And, you know. 10 acres with a trailer on it and some random ass shit. Like you never know what you're going to get here. So yeah, uh, yeah we've, we've dealt with it all. Awesome, man. One last thing before we conclude, knowing what you know now, what's one piece of advice you'd share with a newer agent? I would say patience, I think is the, is the best thing that you, that you can do, you know, and, and I try to compare it to like an internship, right? Just, just like anything else, you know, especially people who come onto a team or this and that, I tell them like, Hey, 
you know, really think about it. Let's say you went to college for four years. Hell, let's say you went six, seven, you got a master's degree, right? When you get out, do you think you're going to get out making six figures? No, you're not. I was like, you're going to start out at some average salaried position. You're probably going to have to work for a couple of years, maybe three to four before you get up to that six out, six figure position. Yeah. And then it's going to open up more opportunities for you to have greater income over time. I like the same as with real estate. You know, it's going to take you your first couple of years just figuring out your, you know what, from a hole in the ground, right? Maybe you get a couple of dollars in your pocket during that time. Yeah. You're going to go through a couple of years of internship before you learn how to consistently make money and do what you need to do. And then by that time, yeah, you're looking at maybe four years in, three to four years in where you're making you know, six figures plus, and that's a trajectory everybody has to take no matter what industry that you're in, yeah. you know, except for us in our business, hey, you're fortunate where you get coaching and mentorship and leads and opportunities to learn on and intern on why and, and get a little bit of walking money in between. Because if not, you know, you're waiting tables or you're back being a barista. Yeah. I don't know why I keep leaning in the brown turn that many fucking yeah, braces right. today, but I love y'all. I love y'all. Awesome. <laughs> well, Jay. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We really do yeah, appreciate it. No if uh, someone wants to reach out or collaborate, what's the best way to do so? Uh, hit me up Instagram. Hit me up Instagram. That's the way uh, underscore J underscore bond underscore double O seven or just search J bond on Instagram. You can't, you can't not find me in there. Awesome. I love that. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much. This has been great.